There are many paths to walk through the night. It's not always the most powerful who write history. It's the ones who survive. It's got to be tricky kind of replacing a character and coming in, but what what has the experience been like for you kind of stepping into this world? Oh, thanks for asking that, man. Um, You're welcome. Yeah, I, it's... It is a unique experience, but like I think, um, I think the way that I approached it was to imagine it as any other uh, job and to treat it as if I was just meeting this character in that point in time. And for me, like you know, the first episode for me is like episode one of season one because I'm meeting him at that point in the story. But the 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 thing that I'm grateful for is that. Often as an actor, you're developing your own backstory and you're justifying things that you find in the script. But uh, but for me, I had all the scripts of season one to mind that and create my own backstory and to understand the motives and the behaviors of the character. And, you know, part of his journey on season two is to um, is to try and come to terms with them and and uh, and accept them. And um, and so, yeah, it, it meant that. I just kind of worked with the source materials and the books as well. And that what was nice. And when I finally watched season one is that, you know, I had been filming and performing the uh, and playing the part for a while. And then things that similarities that arose were entirely kind of unconscious. And I think that is a lovely thing that it kind of speaks to how clear Matt's voice and intentions and kind of, style and and spirit is that uh that when there were things that are uh you know continued from the performance in season one to season two was that they were just kind of it was serendipity like and i'm glad that kind of that's there for the fans to enjoy together we face the impossible but now in our separate corners of the world Daniel, I want to start with you. Uh, you have a great opening scene in this in this season. It's kick, kick ass. Uh, <laughs> uh, what's it been like to let this character grow for you and, and to be kind of immersed in this amazing world that you guys have created? Uh, it's just it's completely surreal. I mean, this is a character that I've I've hoped to be able to play for ever since I started acting. I didn't know if I'd be able to or if it would. You know, if I fit into the fantasy world in any way, you know, um, I played a lot of doctors and agents and lawyers, and I didn't know if I could ever, you know, play a character like Lance. So I'm just, I'm very thankful. And I think you're, you're right. Season one of any show is a, is a kind of figure it out season and find your, find your traction. And season two, despite the pandemic, we were able to, to shoot a complete season and it feels, uh, I mean, pacing wise, tone wise, it's darker. I just, uh, we're very proud of it. You know you have something inside you. Yes. Something that calls for blood. I want to know how to control it. This is a series that uh, obviously a lot of men means a lot to a lot of people. These books are very popular. What's it been like for you, not only with season one finishing, but jumping into season two? What I, I like what they're doing with your character this this season. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about the you know the direction you guys are going? <laughs> well, you know, it's definitely getting darker, and uh, I feel like we have now established the world. We have done done some drawing of the lines, and we're we're coloring more, which is which is which is a lot of fun. And for me, it's completely different because Ran now knows who he is and everyone else that we know that Ran is 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 the dragon. And we we find him in quite an unexpected place. I when I first got the scripts, I was like, wow, this is this is amazing. And I completely understand it. Like, and it were little things that we just build onto that for example like cut off cutting his hair you know is which is trying to disguise himself not to be recognized as or not to reveal where he's from but then at the same time also symbolizing that he's trying to um get rid of the past and i think he soon learns that that's not really possible the last battle's coming the whole world will be ours Kira, I, I talk about you stepping into this role and and I mean it's a it's a cool role. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> 
<laughs> What's it been like for you? Um, it's been such an amazing experience. I mean, I get to play a princess every day. It's it's so much fun. Like I I really get to kind of escape into this world of of um Elaine and I've really enjoyed kind of coming into the show. Um it's so much bigger and so much more immense than I could have ever imagined. I think it, it's been an amazing experience kind of seeing all the sets and um, all the costumes and the hair and makeup design. Um, it's It's been a real whirlwind of an experience and um, I'm really excited for fans to see what we got up to on season two. That's, that's pretty good. I got I to gotta say, Marcus, uh, it's cool to see you back. And what's it been like for you? Because obviously... The first season you kind of start off this season's getting a little darker i i feel like and it's uh and i i think everyone's kind of agreed to that what's it been like for you and your growth of this character yeah man i think you're right i think the there's a bit of a time jump when we meet the characters in season two and i think um they look older and they seem a bit older and there's a new maturity i think to this the show in general i think um in season one the characters were a little bit naive and they kind of just wanted to go back home but i think when we find them in in season two they've kind of accepted their place in this sort of um prophecy and i think perrin is kind of one now that he has to kind of face um, kind of questions about his identity he has these new kind of powers and he's kind of thrown into the midst of violence and warfare on a completely different scale to season one so I think um, he's learning a lot about himself and he's developing um, and showing more sides to him than I think we saw in season one which is really cool you can ever stay here you have no conception of the power they need you can't do this by yourself season two was very different because like season one, because of COVID, it took us like two years to shoot it. So, and in the story, they're always together. So we were together for those two years. And what's different now is that they're all, they're not together. So that was, that was different, but also very refreshing because Rand meets some new characters and, and me as an actor, I got to play with some, some really good people. Uh, and as Rand got to learn from them, I also, as an actor, got to learn from those actors. So I can't wait for the audience to see that. You know, I think we've we've all sat with these characters for four years um, through lockdowns and, uh, you know, a multitude of things. Um, but what's been really wonderful is to, you know, I think we've all grown with these characters and matured with them. Um, particularly in season two, you know, they have very human and real moments, um, which, you know, has been really therapeutic to to act out and embody. Um, you know, I think Egwene is a very beloved character. Um, and so for me, it really is an honour to play her um, and, you know, to, to explore what some of her flaws are, which I think we see um, much more this season. Now, you know, I feel like it would be a benefit to have the history, the, the, these books to bring into your characters. Has that been, has that, have you seen it differently going, kind of going in season two, knowing that you guys are kind of changing a little bit from where the books are? Uh, has it, do you still use that? Do you still use the books as kind of a, oh, this is who, where we're going or anything like that? Daniel. For me, it's a completely separate thing. For me, it's become a thing where when I have time, I go back to the books and just kind of pick up where I left off. It's like it's like a different path I'm on with the books. Mm -hmm. uh, Rosamond has a different path as well. She's she's doing narration audiobooks, so she's read through them. I mean, it, it's different for everyone. At this point, the, the show is getting so intricate and so huge that even the scripts are difficult to read. So I really, I mean, I'm not a fast reader, so I have to sit with a script for a couple, a couple hours to process it. You know, so there's there's constantly some form of reading going on. It's a, very much a wheel of time world for me. Yeah, I mean, look, I think it's it's amazing to have a resource like that at our fingertips always that we can reflect upon. Um, you know, for each actor, it's certainly a different process. I can say in the first season, um, I wanted to just like keep focused on uh, what we were doing on the show because uh, I get distracted quite easily. But certainly for season two, I um, I really did uh, come back to the books because there's so much that's in there in terms of physicality, 
uh, the way channeling is explained or just even parts of the world, um, you know, that we might not have time to really explain in the in the series. So for me, this season, I definitely did utilize the books um, more than I did previously. Yeah, I feel like it's very positive. And I also feel like, I mean, we're, we're really doing our best. And as, as, as I was reading the books myself, I felt like book four or five, I was like, oh, now this has become its own thing. Now it's, it's different from other fantasy books. And I feel like the show is also like that. We, we take, I mean, obviously we try to stay true to the source, but I also know that this show has its own life that we mm-hmm. can't completely predict where it wants to grow, grow to. Of course, we have some control and we do our best, but, and that's really fun to see that now it's, we're shooting th- season three at the moment and it's revealing its, its, its form in front of my eyes. So I can't wait for the audience to see that. I'm tired of being a spoke in the wheel. <laughs> Spoke boy. You are the water that turns the wheel itself. 